Welcome to worship on this day at Trinity to Go at Trinity Lutheran here in downtown Bismarck, North Dakota. I am pastoral intern Colin Newharth, and it is great to join in worship with you. We begin our worship on this day in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join together in the prayer of the day. Eternal God, your kingdom has broken into our troubled world through the life, death, and resurrection of your Son. Help us to hear your word and obey it, and bring your saving love to fruition in our lives through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue now with the readings. Our first reading is taken from Isaiah, the 55th chapter. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way, and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not my thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. The word of the Lord. Our psalm for today is Psalm 63, the first eight verses. O oh God, you are my God, eagerly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you, my flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. Therefore, I have gazed upon you in your holy place, that I might behold your power and your glory. For your steadfast love is better than life itself. My lips shall give you praise. So will I bless you as long as I live and lift up my hands in your name. My spirit is content as with the richest foods and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the night watches, for you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. My whole being clings to you. Your right hand holds me fast. Here ends the psalm. Our second reading is taken from Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth, the 10th chapter. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock and followed them, and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them, and they were struck down in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as examples for us, so that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not become idolaters as some of them did. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, and they rose up to play. 
We must not indulge in sexual immorality, as some of them did, and 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test, as some of them did, and were destroyed by serpents. And do not complain, as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. These things happened to them to serve as an example, and they were written down to instruct us on whom the ends of the ages have come. So if you think you are standing, watch out that you do not fall. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful, and God will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, God will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. This is the word of the Lord. Our gospel for this third Sunday in Lent is taken from Luke, the 13th chapter. At that very time, there were some present who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Jesus asked them, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all the other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Sil Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he, was, he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree and still find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied. Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. This is the gospel of our Lord. Well, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our crucified, risen, and ascended Lord, Jesus Christ. Promises, promises. We make all sorts of promises in this life, don't we? There's so many signs of promises, aren't there? Like a wedding ring, ring for example. The sign of a commitment to a lifetime of loving a certain someone through good and bad. Or, I remember as a kid, pinky swearing for different things that we, together with my friends, would want to say or do or promises to keep. Maybe you've made a promise to your children or grandchildren that you intend to keep of some sort. I know a few years back, I was scared out of my wits when I had to sign a promissory note for our very first mortgage for our first house. At every baptism, parents and sponsors promised to bring up their children in the faith, to teach them what God's promises in Jesus Christ are all about. And in confirmation, it's kind of a similar thing. A beloved child of God affirms these promises and promises themselves to live into this life of faith that we are called into through the cross. That's where our first reading from Isaiah is going today. So in the book of Isaiah, it is generally split up into three sections. The, fir the first part talks about the life of the Israelites and their relationship to God in Babylon before their exile. The second part talks about the life of the Israelites during the Babylonian exile when things aren't that great. And the third part, the one where our reading comes from today, takes place post-exile, where the Israelites are picking up the pieces in the aftermath. In this time, the Israelites 
I have many serious questions about who God is and what God does. And so this beautiful imagery that we see in our Isaiah reading today illustrates God's promises for the Israelites and us. This Isaiah reading starts out with an image of abundance. So God is calling God's people to engage. Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. You that have no money, come buy and eat. Eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. That's God calling us into relationship. That's God reining us in away from our earthly matters and concerns. And then comes the promise. God says, I will make with you an everlasting covenant. My steadfast, sure love for David. God may be indirectly referring to the coming of Christ right here. That there will be someone in the midst of God's people to share more on these promises. And God goes on to say that God will call on nations that the Israelites do not know. And that God has glorified people of all nations. And that includes all of us right here, right now. That, friends, is done through Jesus Christ. Jesus, the one who came to this world to preach, teach, and heal. The one who died on the cross at the hands of political corruption over earthly matters. The one who rose again so that the sting of sin and death would not touch any of you. And in that, you are loved. You are forgiven. And you are given a hope for a future as a child of God. And because of this, you each are called to engage in a relationship with God in Christ Jesus, just as God was calling the Israelites in Isaiah today. In the gospel, Jesus confronts this same kind of thing. He approaches our earthly tendencies and questions how we may turn away from God. Our gospel reading confronts something that might be an elephant in the room to many. The parable of the fig tree confronts us on how we fall to earthly things and may put God on the back burner. When was a time that you may have embodied the fig tree by wasting the soil. Simply put, when was a time that you may have turned from faith in God and focused on the earthly things, like money, power, prestige, and focusing on those things at the expense of things that mattered, like family relationships, relationships with friends, healthy boundaries with co-workers. That's what the parable of the fig tree gets at. And the gardener who puts fertilizer on the wasted ground, that's God in Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. The fertilizer itself is that relationship that Jesus calls us into as the beloved children of God. Now our gospel leaves that end result a little open-ended. Did the fig tree thrive? Or did the fig tree wither? We aren't given the answer, and that's kind of the point. The point is that Jesus holds true to promises in our faith, even through what we would consider the unknown. That we can have the unexpected ha happen and Jesus does not give up on us. That is the good news from the cross. Have you ever been in a slump like the fig tree in today's gospel? 
burned out on life in general, hard to find a speck of happiness anywhere. Or maybe hope has been hard to come by, much like the Israelites in Isaiah today. The silver lining in these darker, more visceral pieces of Scripture is that God in Jesus Christ is always with us, always with you, whether we are leading lives on wasted soil or we are bearing fruit, engaging in our faith in healthy ways. In this season of Lent, I invite you to think about where your wasted soil is. How can you use that soil to bear fruit? How can you engage in the promises of Jesus Christ? How can we live together as the beloved children of God, doing away with hatred, sin, and darkness? So let's be honest, in real life, many promises are broken. I know I haven't kept my pinky swear promises as a kid. The sad reality is that the promise of a wedding ring can tend to be broken at many levels in many different situations. And unfortunately, not everybody keeps to the terms of a signed promissory note. But with God and Jesus Christ, a promise is a promise that will always stand. That promise will never be broken. The promise of the cross of Jesus Christ and Christ risen stands forever. And that is a promise worth celebrating. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our service continues with the prayers of intercession. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church around the world in all its forms, for pastors, for deacons, for bishops, chaplains, and mission developers, for church councils, committee chairs, and all lay ministry leaders, for congregations that contemplate difficult decisions about the future of their ministry. We pray for the health of this planet and the well-being of its creatures, for lands impacted by droughts and at risk of wildfires, for fig trees and vineyards that produce fruit for our nourishment and delight, for animal habitats threatened by climate change, for those called into positions of civic responsibility, for judges, attorneys, and court administrators tasked with uncovering truth and delivering justice. For activists and community leaders who cast a vision of a more compassionate and equitable society. We pray for those who call, who call upon you for mercy. For all who live in poverty and experience hunger. For any who feel tested beyond their strength. For those who are hospitalized and near death. And for all in need of healing. We especially pray for Barb, Brenda, Cheryl, Don, Donna, Fran, Gary, Jerry, John, Karen, Kim, Mary, Mike, Steve, Tom, Cheryl, Margaret, Connie, Danelle, Cole, Denise, Laura, Annette, Sherry, Jim, bon Kurt, Bonnie, and all those we name in the silence of our hearts. We also pray for those whose earthly journeys have ended, we give thanks. With Carol, Wilma, and all the saints, we praise you for the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as as in heaven, give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Just a few announcements before we receive the blessing here. 
Uh, first of all, we thank you most heartedly for the gifts that of abundance that you bring to our uh, Trinity family, the gifts of time, talent, and treasure. Without those, we uh, it would be impossible for us to do the ministry work that we are called to do. So thank you. We give thanks. Um, just a call process update. Um, Matt McMurdy was elected chair of Trinity's call committee, and it's now time for the congregation's involvement in the process. So on Sunday, March 27th, between services or Wednesday, March 30th, after church services, um, the ministry site profile writing team uh, will host open forums to gather your input um, and you can share questions you may have about Trinity, you may um, share questions about ministries and the theology which centers us as a congregation. These are very important uh, topics to cover as a congregation, so all are encouraged to go to that one. We also have a new member orientation, and that will be Sunday, April 2nd at 9.30 a.m. to 11 in room 212, and this will be a chance to meet other people exploring membership and to hear more about Trinity and their ministries. Those are the announcements. Receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.